he has, the ones that he laid, the ones that he healed, the very ones, when the one that caused him affliction, oh, praise the Lord, on the cross he said, for Lord, forgive them, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Thank you for your love, such mercy, such a God, Robin, we enter into the gate by giving you thanks. Give praise unto the Most High. Give adoration for He deserves it. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He never sleeps and never slumbers on our case. He is always on our case. He always knows us. Lord bless you, Kenyana. The Adjola Boshiere, the Kandolo. He is the Almighty Lord. Therefore, I will choose the cross. Therefore, I will choose the cross any given day. Therefore, I will choose the cross over everything because he laid it down for me. And this is the day I have my freedom. This is the day that he bought me with the precious blood. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, you are king of kings. You are Lord of lords. I won't be ashamed to give you my thanks. I won't be ashamed to come to your side. I won't be ashamed to say you are my redeemer and you live forever and ever. You are the king of kings. You are the king of kings. You are he brought no celebration. He had told him, Somebody, give grace, surrender yourself unto the King of Kings. Let's say, Lord, I thank you. For this reason, I will choose you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. I said, The Kosi Ada, the Hala Hali of Kosi Brothers, my Lord, the Ben Hasia the Ben Hasu Pratia, the Shapa. This is what we have. Thank you so much, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. We bless your name this morning. I said on a hill far away, stood an old ragged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. Oh, I love that ragged cross, where the year rest and best for the world of loss. Sinners was saying, Oh, so I cling to the old rugged cross where I lay. If it's the last I will live. I will cling to the old rugged cross. And exchange it someday for a crown. I said I will cling to the old rugged cross. Where my trophy at last I will lay. I will cling to the old rugged cross. Someday for a crown. 
this moment I want us to surrender ourselves unto Lord we want, we want to reckon what he did for us and we want to say Lord thank you and then have us we surrender everything unto you we want to in your death we want to die with you we just want to lay everything everything because if it, if it is not you who are we if you didn't die for us for what, what is the sense of our living we would be engulfed in sin. We would be perished. We would be souls that do not deserve your kingdom. But Lord, you came down in your glory to die for us. This moment, we want to surrender all to the Lord. We want to give everything unto him. We want to say, Lord, have your way. Refine us. Renew us. Give us the imperishable. Let us be pleasing in your sight. Right now, let's surrender unto the most high. Blow say the hearts are the hand of the boat. The grandes on the brand of the gospel. The ultra shut the double gadai. Lord, we give everything to you. The Lord is the Lord of the Lord. 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 in the name of Jesus, please can we be on our feet? Let's be on our feet. The Bible makes us understand that the moment the disciples were waiting in the upper room, they were all in one accord. I want us to be in unity. I want us to be in one accord and cry out for revival because the theme for today's service is the revival. You are crying out for revival. We are praying and we are telling God that Elohim, by your spirit, take, o take over us. By your spirit, let there be revival in our spirit. Yes, let Lord. us remember our first oh, love, yes, oh, yes, where we oh, yes. started, wherever we have lost oh, you. Then Elohim, let them experience you once oh, again. Lift up your voice and begin to speak. We pray for the spirit God. The spirit now raises us from death. The spirit Let the spirit revive our soul. Rapatina <laughs> <laughs> 
Spirit of God, take over. Rada da da ba, macha na 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 kaskataya, repeta kataya. Somebody lift up your voice, shata rakwata, repeta kaskatala brasha ta na ma, repata na kataya, shata kataya, shata na kataya, repeta kaskatala brasha ta na ma, rata la kataya. By the help of the Spirit, ma soko siata, repata na na na, shata na na na, rapa siata, shata na na na. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, one thing that I've come to realize is that the same way that our body needs the air to live. The same way our soul need the spirit to survive. Yes. So when you are without the, the spirit of God, you can never align to the will of God. We are praying and we are telling God. When you read the, the Bible, the, the Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10. Bible says when you fall in the days of adversities, then your strength is small. Yes. We are praying and we are telling God. That Elohim strengthen us by your spirit, make us align with your will. And Lapo Shataya, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lapa Kosi da Teleparo Shatanama, Raso Vekas Kataya, by the help of the spirit, Mazokoski Atenamanama, strengthen us. The Bible says that we can do all things to God who strengthens us. Repekosi Atelabra Shatanamana, Reda Dagadalaba Shatanamana. Siata, <laughs> Spirit of God strengthen us. May we gain strength for the days of adversity. in the name of Jesus Christ. Now our last prayer. There are some few reasons why we come into the presence of God. Now, one of the reasons is that we come here to be profitable, yes, yes. not to be unprofitable. Yes, yes, yes. So when you read the book of Philemon, chapter 1, verse 10 to 11, that was, there was a man called Onesimus. Bible makes us understand that the moment that he was going to encounter Paul, he was unprofitable. But the moment he encountered him and he encountered the Spirit of God, Paul sent him to deliver the message of the message of God unto others. We are praying and we are telling God that Elohim, by your Spirit, make us profitable. As we've come to encounter you, Elohim, make 
us profitable in this kingdom make us profitable in any aspect of our lives may our life bring the gospel unto others in the name of Jesus Christ lift up your voice and begin to pray Father, in the name of Jesus, Elohim, we bless your name for today. Father, we thank you for opening your ears to our prayers. Oh, yes. Father, it is our prayer that Father, have your way through us. Father, let your spirit take control over any activity in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Breaking news, breaking news just in. We have just had the biggest breaking news that's come to you this year. Today is the Revival Sunday and it's about to take over. I hope you guys are holding onto your seats. Hope you guys are ready because it is Revival time. It is said that the Revival Sunday is set to reawaken the church and its people to bring those that have fallen back to their lover, the Lord and Savior. So please prepare and be alert. Hold on to your seats for the earth is about to be shaken, chains are about to be broken, mountains are about to shift, and the Holy Spirit is about to move. So we hope you're ready for Revival Sunday. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. Let's just begin to lift an atmosphere of worship unto our God, the living God, the Holy One, our Creator, our Maker, our Lover, and our Friend, the One who is and is to come. If you can be on your feet, please stand with us as we begin to enter into our time of worship. Hallelujah. his name. Lord, sing. 
Thank you. 
take just one look at me, Father. And everything changes with just one word. And change it takes it under me. And your love comforts me. I will never be the same. surrounds us. No matter where we've been, what we've done, that reckless love surrounds us. He keeps us. He keeps us going. Oh, thank you, Father. That your love transforms us. That your consuming fire, it burns out the impurities and everything and every stain and everything that separated us from you and holy before you that we have a chance to be in your presence once again that we can repeat of with you a new relationship a new love has been born between us and we are faithful we are faithful so we present ourselves to you we present ourselves as a living sacrifice do as you will do with us oh lord transform us as you will my god Father, you are good. Father, you are faithful. Yes, you are.
revived in your spirit, oh God. That is our desire. Do as you will. Transform us, oh God. Declaration that we are filled with anointing.
hallelujah, strong and mighty from your heart. Lift a hallelujah, sing. Firstly, I just want to welcome everyone for joining us here today on our Revival Sunday. Um, I hope everyone takes home something valuable from this service and that we open up our hearts to receive the word. 
so yeah you guys have been talking about grace now to me i say grace is a change of favor and a new standing before god in a biblical sense it's almost like getting a vip pass to the best concert ever and you're gonna have to pay for it or know someone who knows someone now i describe it as a divine kindness from god that basically says look i know you've messed up but i've got you now Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 9. Can you put it up, please? Okay, so once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the command of the powers in the unseen world. He's a spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much, that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life. When he raised Christ from the dead, it's only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. God saved you by his grace when you believe and you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is good things we have done so none of us can boast about it so Paul wrote this and if Paul were writing today he might say you're dead in your blunders and slip ups walking around like zombies glued to your phones completely oblivious but God being rich in mercy basically did the spiritual equivalent of clapping in front of your face and saying wake up I've got something better for you it's about going from a spiritual blindness to a standing ovation in heaven all because of grace See, when we talk about revival, we're not talking about those moments when you finally feel alive because you drank your morning coffee. We're talking about a divine defibrillator that jolts you back to spiritual life when you're dead in your sins. It's like God saying clear, and the next thing you know, you're spiritual, spiritually breathing again. To be revived is to have a new standing before God, like going from the unknown caller to a favorite contact on God's phone. I feel like this would resonate more with those who feel like they've lost their way or in a cold state spiritually. Grace is not an excuse to sin. You sin, we've all sinned. I used to plan to sin tomorrow. Kudja would have bought sweets and hid it under his pillow with his last one pound. The next morning, I would try to steal it underneath his pillow whilst he's sleeping, knowing I could then go to God and ask him for forgiveness. However, the Apostle Paul says, do not use grace to break the law. What grace does is put you back in a position where you can obey the law. The reminder here is that Easter is the celestial GPS recalculating our route home. It's a reminder that Jesus' death and resurrection were for the very purpose of turning us from spiritual zombies into fully alive beings, strolling out of the graveyard of our past mistakes. For so many of us, we live our lives thinking we have to work for, work more, work harder, not receiving a covenant that we live in. That's why Jesus said, if you drink from me, you'll never thirst again because the living water dwells within us. The work that has to be done is an inner work. His grace is sufficient. It's not room to sin, but room for help. So, in the end, grace isn't just a new concept or a nice concept. It's a game changer. I wish you could buy more grace. I wish you could have more grace. You see, mercy is when you don't get what you deserve. Justice is when you get what you deserve. But grace is different from the both. It's when you get what you don't deserve. I can say my life is a living testimony of grace. And I'd like to thank you all for listening. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Okay, guys, it's tithe and offering time, so get your money ready.
Stretch forth your hand. Let's thank God for the pure sacrifice that He gave us. This is just seed to sow, but God gave first. God gave first. Amen. And He's given us opportunity to also give our substance before the Lord. Stretch forth your hands. Let's give thanks unto the Lord. Thank God. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God. Thank God for Jesus, the greatest gift ever. We give you praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you for strength and wisdom. Thank you for opening doors before us that, Father, we can work with our hands. We can work with our wisdom and the skills you have given us so that we can bring something into your house so that, Lord, we can sow into a good ground. We bless you for all that have given. Good measures, present, shaking together, cause men to give back unto our bosom so that we will have everything, all abounding to give for every good cause. And there are so many good causes that we can give, that we can sow. As we consider even the poor, Lord, we lend to you. We thank you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. ready to do some dancing? Are we warmed up? Okay, great. Can we stand on our feet if we can? Everybody clap. Great. 
How's everyone feeling? Sweating. Sweating. <laughs> okay, good. As we all know, Jesus died for us and carried our sins and our shame, and that is why me and you are here today, uh, standing here and just glorifying his name. So the reading I want to just touch upon is from Isaiah chapter 3, Isaiah chapter 53, sorry. Um, he who believed has heard, uh, heard from us, and whom the arm of the Lord revealed, for the before he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground, he had no form or majesty and what we should look at is him and no beauty that we should desire from him. He despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. As one whom hide, hides their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows and yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, and he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him is the chastisement that has brought us peace. With his wounds we are healed. Like all sheep we have gone astray, and we have turned to every one. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that he has led to his slaughter, like a sheep that before its shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And for his generation who considered that he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked and a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him and he had put to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see offering and he shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand and out of anguish his soul, out of anguish his soul shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge and by the righteous one, my servant will make many accounted and righteous. He shall bear their iniquities and therefore I will divide the portion of many and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered by the tran transgressions. Yet he bore the sin of many and to make intercession for the transgressors. So G as we all know, Jesus died for us. And I want to put it out there for us to let go of the worldly things and give our minds, our souls, and our bodies to God to be a living sacrifice to him. There's one thing that I always just take and hold on to me. God didn't bring us this far just to bring us this far. So we should carry on having faith and carry on praising him and glorifying his name. Amen. Thank you. To be revived is to be the new subjection to God. Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 to 21. 
My old self has been sacrificed with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless, for it is keeping the law as if keeping the law could make us right with God. Then there was no need for Christ to die. When the Bible verse reads, so I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God, it is something that we cannot ignore because it is what we live by. Where I am now is because of the faith and trust that I have in Jesus Christ, and I am confident that everyone here can say the same thing. We live in our bodies thinking that we have, we, that, we, that we are moving our own pace and will, but it is Jesus who carries us through, not the things of the earth, which includes our bodies. The Bible verse goes on to say, who loved me and gave himself for me. To give yourself for someone else is the biggest sacrifice that you can make. Some of us are unable to lend help or even time for others, but Christ loved us so much that he gave himself, the true definition of selflessness and love. Verse 2 starts off by saying, I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. God's grace is defined as undeserved favor. The definition of favor is to have the approval, support, or liking from something to someone. Based on these definitions and based on the trust that we have in God and his son, Jesus Christ, how can we not act as if this means nothing? Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. And I'm heir of salvation, I'm purchased of God. And I'm born of his spirit, and I'm washed with blood. One thing I know, as the Bible says clearly in the book of Leviticus, that the blood is given for atonement of our sin. It's given at the altar so that we will be made whole and clean. For atoning for our sins so that our sin will be taken away once and for all. And Jesus did that. When he did it, he gave his blood. He gave his body. He was bruised beyond description. We didn't even see. The Bible says there was no beauty in him. And on that night when he was saying bye to his disciples, the Bible says, he took bread and he gave thanks. And he broke it and said, this is my body that is broken for you. And afterwards, he took the cup, the cup of the New Testament, a different cup altogether that brings grace and mercy to anyone that believes. He said, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. In my blood for atonement. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for the bread and the wine. Thank you for your body and your blood given to us. We receive this with thanksgiving. And as we break bread together, let there be exchange. Let there be an exchange, Father, for our filth. Give us your holiness, your cleansing your forgiveness. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Church, the body of Christ that was broken for us, broken for you, shall we partake together. The blood of the Lamb given for atonement of your sin and my sin. For your healing, for my healing. For the management of your life. That in him you are complete. And you are perfect. Shall we partake? Let us pray. Thank you for your love giving us free of charge. And thank you for the liberty you gave us. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As the singers sing, we will go around and take their cups.
his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Lord bless you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with you all. Amen. God is good. All and all the time. So we've touched on grace, substitution, and crucifixion. And as we have understood the reason for Christ's death, we understand that we also died. I want to take a reading from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Amen? Amen. Now our death in Christ may not be in a physical sense, and it shouldn't be something that is taken literally but unraveling the metaphor behind this we can connote that the life of our fleshly desires the life of the world is what died with him when he died on a cross as children of God our lives should be cemented in Christ because he is our life therefore setting our sights on the things of above submersing ourselves in God's wisdom his glory his presence allows us to make the proactive actions to ensure that when he appears in glory, when he shows himself as El Shaddai, we also appear with him in glory as well because we submit to him. Casting our minds to the things of that of his in his kingdom requires our total submission. It can't be submission that is half-hearted. It can't be from a place of mediocrity. We have to submit to his will, to his wishes, to his ways, and he's firstly asking that we only come to him, believe in him. And believing in him comes with an understanding of who Christ is. I mean, even my namesake, Philip, for as long as he walked with Christ on the day of the Last Supper, he asked to see the Father. And Jesus responded saying, have I been with you for so long that you still have to ask me this? Because he didn't have a deeper understanding of who Christ was. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be like my namesake, even though I have his name. And from this response, the understanding that we get from it is that the authoritative capacity that Jesus was operating under when he was on earth, the good works that he was doing, it wasn't the capacity of his own. He wasn't working under his own authority. He was working under the authority of God. And with that, if we look at John chapter 1, verse 4, it says, God, that in God is life. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now our submission to him allows us to reap eternal life through Christ because we believe in Christ. We understand who Christ is, and we know that Christ is the son of God. We know that the capacity he was operating under and with that knowledge and with our submission and with our thoughts casted onto things that are of the kingdom, how we can benefit the kingdom, how we can do his works. We understand that through him we have eternal life. And I just want to end on John chapter 5, 24. 
which reads, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. From this verse, he's spoken about everlasting life because you are hearing his word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So everything in this life is God. God is life. God is the word. As we eat the word, we are eating God, essentially. As we eat the word, we are eating life. And we have life in everlasting abundance through Christ who came, who shed his blood on the cross of Calvary for us. I pray that God grants us mercy, he grants us grace, the wisdom to walk in his ways. May we continue to do exploits for him. And I pray that through our belief in Christ, we will continue to reap everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Church, can we give a massive round of applause to the youth, to every reader, for all the team at the back, the instrumentalists, the singers, the media team, the ushers, because they've done such an amazing job today. Can we just give it up for our youth? Because they're choosing to take on the mantle and carry the load and move forward, and no man is getting left behind. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. As you are standing with me, I just want to have a quick word of prayer before I go into the word. Father, Lord, I just want to thank you for this day. I want to thank you for this gathering, and I want to thank you for this word. Lord, may your word penetrate, restore, renew, transform, and get the message that you want to get across through me, Lord. Use me as your vessel, and may it be done in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Church, we may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm going, we're going to get into the word now. Um, we're going to read together and kind of dissect and digest the wisdom of God um, behind this word. And as you guys have been listening to the readings, we've had grace, we've had crucifixion, we've had substitution, and we have had life as the themes for the running today. And as you know, the title for today was The Revival. And when we were deciding to pick this theme, we sort of was relating it to, of course, the Resurrection Sunday where Jesus died and rose again. And in the youth, we've been going through a time where we are going through our own revival. We are being revived. Life is coming again. And we thought this would be the perfect time to get that theme to you guys. So we're going to go into the word a little bit. And as I'm reading the word with you, you should be reading with me. I hope you are reading with me. Um, we're going to be affirming in this word. And we're going to be declaring in this word. And as you're reading it and you're reading the context of it, put yourself into the position of the word. Yeah. So when I say we should declare something it means i'm going to say something and i will hope you will respond back to me with vim amen. amen amen so turn your bibles with me to ephesians chapter 2 ephesians chapter 2 and i'm going to read in the amplified version cuz there's more descriptive words in there i think it gives it a nice rounded understanding behind it if you can play um, replica, that would be great. I like that one the most, actually. Ephesians chapter 2. Do we have it up in the amplified version for me, please? Church, if you are there, say amen. 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 All right, let's get into it. 
Now, the subheading for this particular chapter starts off by saying, made alive in Christ. This is in the Amplified Version. Made alive in Christ. And from verse 1, it reads, And you he made alive when you were spiritually dead and separated from him because of your transgressions and sin in which you once walked. You were following the ways of the world, influenced by the present age, in accordance with the prince of power of the air, Satan. The spirit who is in work in the disobedient, the unbelieving, and who fights against the purpose of God. Say, I believe. I believe. And I shall no longer be influenced by the world. Influenced by the world but by the spirit of the living God. Amen. Amen. Amongst these unbelievers, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, our behavior governed by the sinful self, indulging in desires of human nature. Without the Holy Spirit and the impulses of the sinful mind, we were by nature, children under the sentence of God's wrath, just like the rest of mankind. Verse four, but God, say but God, being so very rich in mercy because of his great and wonderful love in which he, wo- he loved us, even when we were spiritually separated, spiritually dead and separated from him because of our sins, because of our sins, he made us spiritually alive together with Christ. For by, the, by his grace, his undeserved favor and mercy, favor and mercy, hey. you have been saved from the God's judgment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, I am alive. I am alive. I am alive through Christ Jesus. And I just want to remind you that whatever had laid dormant, whatever has been lost, whatever was taken away from you, today may it be restored in Jesus' name. May there be a spiritual awakening in this church today. And this is the revival. Hallelujah. Verse 6. And he raised us up together with him when we believed. And we know that we believed. Amen. And seated us with him in the heavenly places because we are in Christ Jesus. And he did this so that in the ages to come, he might clearly show the immeasurable and surpassed surpassed riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. by By providing for us redemption. Verse 8. For it is by grace. Say grace. Grace. It is by grace, God's remarkable compassion and favor drawing you to Christ that you have been saved. Say, I am saved. I am saved. 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 Actually delivered from the judgment and given eternal life. Amen. Amen. Through faith. And the salvation is not of yours, yourselves, not through your own work, but it is by it is the undeserved gracious gift of God, not as a result of your own works, nor attempts to keep the law, so that no one will be able to boast or take credit for any way for this salvation. Hallelujah. And verse ten. For we are His workmanship, His own masterwork a work of art created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which he set. It was predestined for us. And we always hear the verse where it says he knew you from your mother's womb it means that it was predestined for you he knew your paths so that we would walk in them living the 
good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us. Hallelujah. When I got to this verse in, in Ephesians chapter 10, which is verse 10, um, Ephesians chapter 2, which is verse 10. When I got to this particular part, it reminded me of the song that we sang today, The Refiner. And I had watched a video online some time ago, which I sent into the group chat. And the man was telling a story about a group of ladies in a Bible study group. And they were studying the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 3. And in that word, the, the author describes God as a refiner of silver and like laundry soap, laundry soap. And the ladies, when they were discussing this, they became curious about why the author would describe God in such a way. So she went away to go and find someone who is a refiner by profession. And he, she sat with him and watched how he does his work. And as the refiner put the silver into the furnace, he was explaining to her that I have to pull it into the hottest part of the furnace, in the center of it all. And I have to keep hold of it. And she asked him, if you kept it in for too long, what will happen? And he responded to her and said, if I kept it in a minute too long, it will be destroyed. And she said, okay. So how do you know when it's ready? And the refiner said to him, oh, that's easy. I know it's ready when I can see myself in it. And she said, so what do you do this whole time when this process is going? He said, the, the whole time I'm holding on to it. So when I thought about the workmanship and God thinking of us as his work of art, when he puts us as an unrefined piece of silver into the furnace and that gets hot and the pressure's on and you feel tight in your space and uncomfortable and so much is afflicting you, the entire time God is holding on to you, the entire time he's watching you, he's observing, he's waiting for the perfect time to take you out. And it won't feel comfortable when you're in that heat. But he needs to get rid of all those impurities. He needs to loosen the bonds off of you. He needs to make you pure and shiny and beautiful like a refined piece of silver. And that's what this piece, this verse reminded me of. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to move on. Into verse 11, sorry, of um, Ephesians chapter 2. Back to verse 11. We're doing small Bible study today, guys. Follow me, yeah? Hallelujah. Amen. And verse 11, okay, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. If you have your own version, still follow. Therefore, remember that at one time you were Gentiles by birth, who were called uncircumcision by those who were called themselves circumcision itself a mere mark, which is made in the flesh by human hands. Verse 12, remember that you at that, at that time, you were separated from Christ, excluded from any relationship with him, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of his promise, with no share in the sacred messianic promise, with and without knowledge of God's agreement so we were very far apart from him before Jesus Christ we had no way of getting to the father we had no relationship with him that's what it's explaining that we were complete two different people having no hope in his promise and living in the world without God see that's where we were but it's not where we're going that's how it started but it's not how it will end yes. not without not now that we have Jesus Christ amen Verse 13, but now at this very moment in Christ Jesus, who once were so very, very far away from God, he have been brought near by the blood of Christ. On Friday, we heard Bishop use the word atonement, the atonement by the, atonement by the blood. That atonement has now reconciled our relationship with God. 
it has brought God and mankind back together. And we now have a uni new union between us. We have a new friendship with him. Now we can come to him and call him Abba, Father. This is me. I present myself to you. Because before, before that time, we would have not been able to have that. Can you imagine? Can you imagine life not being able to come to the Father? Like, So moving on, um, and we're going to read this to the end of the chapter. We're almost there. Stay with me, guys. <laughs> chapter four, um, verse 14. For he himself is our peace and our bond of unity. He who made both groups, Jews and Gentiles, into one body and broke down the barrier, the dividing war of, sp of the spiritual antagonism between us by abolishing in his own crucified flesh the hostility caused by the law with its commandments contained in ordinance, which he satisfied, so that in, the, in himself he might make the two one man, thereby establishing peace, and that he might reconcile them, both Gentile and Jew, into, the, into one body to God through the cross, thereby putting death to hostility. Verse 17, and he came and he preached the good news of peace to the Gentiles who were far and to the Jews who were close and near. For it is through him that we both have a direct way and approach in one spirit to our Father. Chapter, um, verse 19, I don't know why I say I keep saying from chapter. Verse 19, we're at the end. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, outsiders without rights of citizenship, but you are fellow citizens and with the saints, God's people, and members of God's household. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with, Jesus, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. Like I told you before, if it wasn't for Jesus, we wouldn't have it. He's the final piece. Verse 21. In whom the whole structure is joined together and it continues to increase into a holy temple in the Lord, a sanctuary dedicated, set apart and sacred to the presence of the Lord in him and in fellowship with one another you also are built, being built together in a dwelling place of God in the spirit church say amen, amen. say amen. amen if you can stand stand with me hallelujah Church, we have reached the destination of this particular journey. And at this certain place, a change is occurring. We are choosing to abide in the dwelling place of God in the spirit. And we accept our adoption into God's household. The Holy Spirit is about to perform spiritual resuscitation. We are stirring up an awakening and a revival of every spirit in this room that has been a dead state. As we begin to rededicate our lives back to Christ, back to our creator, back to our first love, the one who has and is to come again. This is the complete surrender of our entire beings. A complete surrender of our entire beings a stripping away and a refining until it re reflects the very image that he, content, he intended for us to be. As we begin to prepare our hearts for this time of rededication, I just want you to take a moment with God. Speak to him and communicate with him from your heart. God will not 
force you to rededicate yourself. Be willing to. Be willing to rededicate yourself. And say, Lord, look at me. I'm here. I've seen myself. Having lost all that was supposed to be for me. Messing up myself in so many ways. I return to you. I come back to you, O oh Lord. I am here. Let friends mock me. I am willing to stand with you. I choose this path from now on. Refiner's fire. Purify me seven times. Make me perfect inside. And outside in my flesh. In my mind, make me and help me conform to your word. He said, present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and do not conform to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind for you are his workmanship you are his brand his seal is upon you and this is your moment come back home Make up your mind that I'm going to walk in the way of the Lord. The reading in Colossians said, therefore mortify your members that are in the flesh. Let them be crucified with him. Thank you, Jesus. I would want you to think of this. All of us here in one way or the other have been to restaurants before or eaten elsewhere. When you go out there with a great appetite wanting to say, I just want to enjoy my food. The waiter comes in. The food is prepared. And he brings you dirty plates to eat from. Plates that have not been washed probably from previous use. But you can smell the aroma of the food Yet the plate in which it is served, or it is being served, or it will be served, is dirty. You probably would get up, and if you have booked and paid, you'd ask for your money back. You are his workmanship. Present yourself cleansed. So that what you serve unto the Lord will be appetizing to him. That he would enjoy it. That you return to your first love and say, I am here, Lord. As I serve you with worship, 
As I serve you with praise, it's coming from a clean plate. So Lord, enjoy. This is served before you. He said, therefore, sanctify yourself. And if a man will cleanse himself from these things, he will be a vessel unto honor that is preserved for the master's use. Pray with me here. I have been in a place where my life was so filthy. Yet I was serving food before God and God's people. Father, I come before you. Father, I come before you. I'm asking for your cleansing. I'm asking for your cleansing. I'm desiring for your retaking. I'm desiring for your retaking. Let your life be alive in me again. Let your life be alive in me again. Let this vessel be cleansed again. Let this vessel be cleansed again. Search me and know my heart. Search me and know my heart. Purify me as pure silver. Purify me as pure silver. As pure gold. As pure gold. You can use. You can use. For a holy purpose. For a holy purpose. For an honorable purpose. For an honorable purpose. Jesus. Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. For your sacrifice. For your sacrifice. For me. For me. Today. Today. I am worthy. I am worthy. To be called your child. To be called your child. Because you died for me. Because you died for me. And I believe you did. And I believe you did. And I come to you. And I come to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Use me as you would. Yes, use me as you would. A workman. A workman. That you. That you. Have made. Have made. Before the foundation. Before the foundation. Of my life. Of my life. finest fire this is your time working on us as we rededicate our lives unto you father this is a temple it is your temple that you will dwell 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 have more of us lord have more of me have more of me Fill me with your spirit. Have more of me, Lord. Cleanse me and I'll be white than snow. Thank you. Thank you. Church, Satan would not want you to be in this position. He would rather want to keep you in there where you cannot present yourself to God with pride in you saying, you have worked on me, God. When I use the word pride, I mean honor. The honor of the Lord over your life. The glory of the Lord. But you've been made whole in him. You've been made perfect in him. For by grace you are saved through faith. You can say thank you to the Lord for working.
Father, we thank you for this time in your presence. We thank you for your word, your wisdom, and your truth. And I pray that, Father, as we leave this place, your work will continue within us. Keep our cup overflowing, O oh Lord, that we will never run empty or dry. Give us strength when we are weak so we can keep running the race. And keep your fire burning in us. That we will keep going and doing your will and your work with pure joy. There is gratitude in our hearts for this moment to be able to come before you, Lord. We are thankful. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we declare. Amen. 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 And amen. Give a mighty applause unto the Lord. For he is faithful and he is good. And he is all that we could imagine him to be. Praise the almighty God. I hope you feel good. I hope you feel restored. I hope you feel renewed. I'm ready to walk into a new week with the blessings of God. Church, can I ask you to get your love offerings ready right now? Your love offerings ready. A couple weeks ago, Bishop did mention to you that today we will be collecting a love offering today. So can I ask you to get your offerings ready? We will be calling you by your day, Borns, as we have done in the past by Mondays. So Team Monday, get yourselves together. Team Tuesday, get yourselves together. Team Wednesday, I think it's just me, but get yourselves together. <laughs> Team Thursday, get yourselves together. If you are unsure of your day born name, go on your calendar, scroll to your year born and it will show you if you're Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday or Sunday. Can I get the praise team here with me, please? God bless you all. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If I were you, I would be grateful, I would be thankful because hallelujah. I'll be grateful and thankful because it's not by my strength that I've been saved. By grace that no man will boast. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Are you ready to shift the atmosphere? Are you ready to be grateful, to be thankful, to give everything we do you unto the most high God? Unto the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. So like my sister said, it's going to be our love offering. We're going to be starting with the Mondays. Monday bones will come first. Instrumentalist, can you give us something? Praise, praise, praise with an instrument. Unto the Lord. Unto the Lord, unto the Lord. Hallelujah. And me him sent out my dog Jesus. Now also me book and see O Sande Majin Kwan Shirano, Papa for the Ajimi Fimi Bonemo, ain't he? Name do Jesus, ain't he? Name do no. Now they be for so you not check me, Kwa, Wa Mama, yes, yes, you want to trip Ain't he? Name do Jesus, ain't he? Name do no. Now they be for so you not check me, Kwa, Wa Jesus, Jesus, oh team order, Jesus, oh Jesus, oh team order, 
We say Jesus, you say Jesus. Oh, Ting Water, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Ting Water. To the point. Oh, yeah, and the Jesus. Oh, yeah, and the Jesus. Oh, your chance, so Jesus. Oh, Ting Water. It's Oh, yeah, and the Jesus. Oh, yeah, and the Jesus. Oh, yeah, and the Jesus. Oh, yeah, watch now, watch now, Jesus. Oh, team water, we say, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, team water, Jesus. Oh, we're right, Jesus. Oh, team water. When is it for you? Hey, yeah, wanna, 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 why, yeah. Hallelujah, yeah, oh, wanna, why. Wednesday, I wanna, 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 why, yeah, 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 he wanna, wanna, why, wanna, wanna, why, yeah, yeah, who wanna, I see I see wanna, wanna, why, yeah, wanna, wanna, why, yeah, yeah, who wanna, why, yeah, wanna, wanna, why, yeah, yeah, who wanna. Me say wanna where you wanna 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 na why yeah Hallelujah yeah who wanna na wanna na why yeah wanna na why yeah yeah who wanna why yeah There's a four yeah bet to Ebenezer Nyame na do my rapa kind you Nyame why ya mau na fa na se manu. Yeah, bet to a beniza. Yame, yame, na do my rapa. Kind you, yame, why ya bow. Never, na say man. Yeah, beniza, a beniza. Yame, na do my rapa. Kind you, yame, why ya bow. Never, na say man. A beniza. Yame, na do my rapa. Kind of, yame, why ya bow. Na fa, na se mado. Friday for honor. Friday for. I ain't for any. Us is so be a rapo to do. For money, see. For inch and baby, for yam. I ain't for any. Us is so be a rapo to do. For money, so. For inch and baby, for yam. O man is so yes to know your hidden. O man is so yes to know your hidden. O man is so yes to know your hidden. O man is so, O man is so yes to know your hidden. O man is so yes to know your hidden. O man is so yes to know your hidden. O your hidden. And see, every man is so a man in a bed who say yes to deny. Oh, yeah, be my dini so I may not be who say yes to dina. Oh, yeah, be my so, 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 yeah, be my dini so, yeah, be my dini so I may not be who say yes to Christ to my so, yeah, be my dini so I may not be who say yes to dina. Saturday four. Ah. Me see me yes who I am. What are they doing? What are they patching me? Me in a head. Me yes who I am. What are they doing? What are they patching me? Me in a head. Me yes who I am. What are they doing? What are they patching me? Me in a head. Me yes who I am. What are they patching me? Me yi me yi me yi me yi me yi na yeda wa ma ni pachi me me yi na yeda yes yes eh oda oda ado me wa ma ni pachi me me yi na yeda enti wo yo wo yo wo yo wo yo eh wo yo wo yo wo yo me yi yes wa ye wo do do me ye 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 Sunday for 
Yeni na bomu da na siu. Yeni na bomu da na siu. Sani. Yeni na bomu da wa siu. Yeni na wa siu. Yeni na bomu da wa siu. Yeni na bomu da wa siu. Yeni na wa siu. Yeni na bomu da wa siu. Yeni na bomu da wa siu. Yeni na wa siu. Yeni na bomu da wa siu. Yeni na bomu da wa siu. Yeni na wa siu. Yeni na bomu da wa siu. Yeah, you know, boy, 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 that was you, right? Yeah, you know, boy, 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 that was you. Yeah, that was you. Yeah, that was you. Yeah, that was you. Yeah, you know, boy, boy, yeah, you know, boy, boy, that was you. Yeah, you know, boy, boy, yeah, that was you. Yeah, you know, boy, boy, that was you. Yeah, you know, boy, boy, that was you. Yeah, that was you. One boy, yes, you will say, yeah. Hey, one more yes. Hey, I can't teach you. Yes, you remember. Hey, I. Mr. Senior, me tell you, me and me and you. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, me and me and you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Meja yo hini mina yo hini o hini Yesu ba yo hini papa yo meja mina yo hini o hini Yesu ba yo hini papa yo enti me yo hini ba enti me yo hini ba oh enti me yo hini ba enti me yo hini ba. Two four seven, I will praise you, Jehovah. Two four seven, any day, any time, I will praise you, my King. Two four seven, I will praise you, Jehovah. Two four seven. grateful in your heart, be thankful in your heart unto the Lord, unto the Spirit of God that has brought you liberty, glorious liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's always liberty. Father, thank you for blessing us with grace, with favor, peace, life eternal. We are so grateful unto you. Brethren, I want you to say a word to the Lord concerning our youth. Give thanks unto the Lord for their lives. Each one of them, those that are here present and those that could not come and those that the Lord would add to them as we continue in this life called, this journey called life. Let's just thank God. Let's just bless God. Adore him in the mighty name of Jesus. They are vessel in the hands of the Lord that Jesus will continue to use them to touch generations and leave a legacy in the mighty name of Jesus, we bless you for all the talents. We thank God for all the gifts. We thank God for the fruit of righteousness that Jesus is worthy to receive from our youth and from all of us as we serve the Lord, you know, in gladness, as we serve the Lord faithfully 
in season and out of season. Lord, we are here. Our life is yours. Take what you desire and use us for your glory and praise. I want us also to pray for people that are going through bereavement. Life does come to an end here on earth, but it brings pain, it brings agony, it brings disappointment, questions. But God is not obliged to ask those questions. We can ask and ask and ask. I want us to use until Teresa as a point of contact to pray for anyone that have lost a loved one. Let's pray for Auntie Vida and her family. I also want you to pray for my sister Michelle and her family. Her husband has lost, Uncle Wally has lost a mother and a stepmother in a space of three days. Let us pray. It can be hard. Only God can soften the situation. So let's pray for these brethren as we reach out also unto anyone that is sorrowing. The Bible says rejoice with them that are rejoicing and mourn with them that are mourning. Let's pray for grace and mercy and peace in such a time as this. It is only the Lord that can lift them up from that Mary clay and put their feet on the rock to stay. We give you praise, Father, for our brethren, Lord, as we stand with them, as we support them in all areas of their lives. We pray, lifting them before you, God of comfort, Lord, comfort them such as time as this. God of peace, let your peace surround them, O oh Lord. God of strength, strengthen them in their moment of weaknesses. Wipe away the tears, Lord God Almighty. Let every eye look unto you. It is only you that can sustain. Sustain them, sustain the living, O oh God. Sustain the families, sustain friends, sustain loved ones. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, Spirit of God, thank you. Thank you that you do more than we can ask, more than we can desire, and more than we can even dream. We give you praise as we continue this week. Thank you that you are with us. Thank you that you are in us. And thank you that you are working through us to the glory and the honor of your great name. Amen. Please rise up onto your feet. Let's all share the grace of fellowship together. Amen. Lift your hands and receive from the Lord. Let's all share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with us all. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Give the Lord a clap of friend. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Our young ones do extend a hand to any youth that is here that is not part of this assembly or church or mission or ministry, whatever you want to call it. You are part of the body of Christ. You have nowhere to fellowship and you have nowhere to extend your services. Look at what happened here today. Let's give them a big hand, the you. Let's just give them a big hand for ministering to us. God bless you. More anointing upon your lives. So we welcome you if you are not part of it. God bless you. I think there are some refreshments at the back there. We have overstayed our time. So there are certain things we will not be able to do. Let us pick up the things and then pack them there and give this place to whoever owns it, and then we are looking for a place. <laughs>